All right, so we've got our lamb. Uh, like I was saying earlier, anytime that I have animals, I go ahead and weigh them. Uh, it's easy to do and it helps you keep track of how they're progressing. So we have our lamb. The first thing we're gonna do is weigh them. And the reason for that is you always wanna move from the least invasive to the most invasive. So think about the steps that you're gonna do to take care of the animal and move forward appropriately. So obviously weighing the animal is gonna cause the least amount of stress on them. Tagging the ear, cutting the tail, that's the other end of the spectrum. So I'm gonna start off simple with weighing, then I'm gonna give them the oral drench, then I'm going to give them the injection. I'm going to tag the ear, and last but not least, I'm going to dock the tail. So again, least invasive to most invasive. I'm gonna place my lamb in my sling. Now the sling just goes between the front and rear legs, just like that, wraps around the animal. Turn on my scale. All the tools that I'm using today can be bought at Premier. Um, that's pretty much our go-to place for most of our tools. The scale, nice and handy, comes from Premier. All right. So it looks like we're coming in at about 18, we're gonna call it 18 and a half pounds today. So she's doing really good. I believe her birth weight was uh, around 11. right around 11 pounds. Um, so we're doing good. We also weigh our animals as soon as they're born. Now off screen, you can't see, but I've got my daughter that's actually writing everything down in the book right now as I read it out. So again, we move from most uh, comfortable to least comfortable. I use the term invasive, least invasive, most invasive. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give her an oral drench. Like I said, it's just a high fat vitamin E complex that I'm going to give her because what we're doing today is going to cause her a little bit of stress. I'm going to give her six cc's. A cc is equal to a milliliter. So I'm going to give her six milliliter oral drench. Let this survive. I have my nice steel lead here. It's going to go in the back of the mouth and you're going to inject it slowly. You don't want to shoot it down their throat and cause them to aspirate. So nice and easy. And this stuff, it smells like butterscotch. So I've never tried any personally, but it definitely, uh, if it tastes as good as it smells, I'm sure it's good. So as you can see, she's swallowing that no problem. Nice and easy. Good. All right. So while I have her in place here, I'm just gonna give her a once over and check her out. I wanna check her eyelids. See that they're nice and red, make sure she's not anemic. I'm also gonna check her bite. Make sure that her bite is appropriate, and it is. She's got some sharp little teeth in here. Uh, her mom's been nursing her, no problem. If her mom was having trouble nursing her, I would probably go ahead and file her teeth down. As you can see, she's got sharp little fangs on her. Um, sometimes moms will reject the baby or won't let them nurse when they have really sharp teeth like that, so in that case, you would wanna file them down. Um, you wanna go ahead and hold her on her back for me? So Jocelyn's gonna, Put the baby in the correct position to do uh, most of the work on her today. As you can see, she's got her hands on her bottom legs and her hands on her top legs. And that's going to allow her to open her up and spread her out for me uh, when I go to give her her injections. Go ahead and pull her legs down. So while we're doing this, I'm going to inspect her teat structure and make sure that it's appropriate. Uh, she doesn't have any extra tags. Everything looks good. She's got two well-formed teats. Um, Everything looks good on her. She doesn't have any kind of an umbilical hernia. Uh, her leg structure looks good. Her bones feel appropriate. Her hips feel appropriate. I'd say overall we have a really healthy lamb. So now that we've now that we've talked about uh, the basic structure of the lamb, we've gone over that. Jocelyn has the baby in the correct position. Uh, before we move forward, as I said, doing any kind of uh, invasive procedure where we're going to be causing a wound on the animal, we want to make sure that we give them. Uh, the tetanus antitoxin. So the tetanus antitoxin is going to be given sub-Q, which means subcutaneous, um, and we're going to give 0.25 milliliters of the tetanus antitoxin. So 
the first thing I want to do is I want to get my needle and put it on my syringe. As you can see, I've got my gloves on. You always want to make sure that you have gloves on. You don't want to do this with your bare skin. Now this is a lure lock, which basically means that this needle is going to screw onto the syringe. I highly recommend using these. There are slip locks where they slide on. I don't like those. I think that the needle can come off. Uh, the needle can come off and be stuck in the animal. The animal's off running around, especially when you're dealing with adults. Um, this is just better. It gives you a better seal. So the needle is going to screw on to the syringe just like that, just finger tight, and you're ready to go. As you can see, I left the cap on the needle, and you want to do that uh, until you are ready to use. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my iodine prep pads, and I'm going to thoroughly clean the top of my bottle. And I've got that saturated. I'm going to let that sit for a moment. Now Jocelyn is going to put the lamb in the appropriate position. Can you sit back up here for me? And she's going to spread her out. Now I'm going to give a subcutaneous shot. The easiest way for me to do this is to give it right over the rib cage. We've got this extra skin right here. Um, and we've also got bare skin up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my iodine. And I'm going to wipe on the animal. And I'm going to let that sit. That just helps to ensure that that part of the animal is clean. I'm not going to set her up for any kind of an infection. Next thing I'm going to do, take the cap off my needle. Once you uncap a needle, you don't ever want to recap it. You're setting yourself up for needle sticks that way. Not good. Again, do not recap a needle. Once it's uncapped, it stays uncapped. I'm going to draw up as much air into the syringe as I'm going to give for the injection. Again, draw up as much air as you're going to give for the injection. In this case, I'm going to give one quarter cc, so 0.25 cc. So I'm going to draw 0.25 of air, inject it into my stopper, inject the air, hold the stopper upside down, And now I'm going to overdraw, and now I'm going to push back in. The reason I overdraw is it allows me to be able to push any air back into the bottle that might be in the syringe. So as you can see, I'm giving the syringe a little tap, and it allows me to get any air bubbles out. I'm going to push it up to one quarter cc, and I'm going to withdraw the bottle. 